cellular extinction. SpaceX Starlink is now the largest 4G network on the planet. I'm not kidding. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time Without Tea. <laughs> I hope you have a cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out as we talk about space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of great tech on this channel. Today we're gonna be talking about DTC or direct to sell just a little bit. And the reason being is I just got news that SpaceX Starlink has become the largest 4G network on the planet. And there was a bunch of information I wanna share with you and some articles I read, I threw them all together. I'm gonna to go through it with you. And then of course, I'll provide my commentary as I always do. But more importantly, what I have to say is what you have to say down below in the comment area. Please go down there, add something, anything. Doesn't really matter. If you don't wanna put something down there because you're shy, that's fine. Put an emoji. I don't care. Whatever is good. At least I know that you actually watched the video. That would be great. Even better is if I heard from you. I want to know your thoughts about all of this. What do you think about the possibility of SpaceX Starlink being the fourth telecom out there, right? Instead of having the big three, we have AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. How about if all of a sudden you have SpaceX Starlink in the mix? And in the future, they're gonna be taking a lot of business. Like I've told you over the last year or so from those big three, and I'm really excited for it. And I'll tell you why before the end of this video. So let's go through these articles. And of course, I'll give you my commentary. And then as I said, down below, I wanna hear from you. The cellular extinction event, the world's largest 4G network nobody saw coming. SpaceX Starlink's DTC or direct to sell service has quietly flipped the script on global telecommunications with over 6 million people already connected and projections topping 8.2 million subscribers by December 2025. SpaceX Starlink isn't just another internet provider. It now is the largest 4G coverage zone on earth. And here's the kicker. It achieves this with absolutely zero, not a single tower. No cell towers, guys. That is incredible to me. Think about that. These other providers have spent decades getting to where they are. And SpaceX Starlink has done it in like 24 months. It's just craziness. Anyways, it continues. From dead zone to dominance. For decades, the big three in the US, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, defined mobile connectivity through dense networks of towers, fiber, and billions in infrastructure. But SpaceX Starlink has leapfrogged the grid. By beaming 4G directly from satellites, it bypasses terrain, dead zones, and local infrastructure altogether. That's why hikers in remote Alaska or farmers in sub-Saharan Africa can now send video calls with the same reliability as someone in downtown New York. Now, that's kind of not factual. It's close to it. It's getting there, let's say. We're not at video calls as of yet, but they are doing data already. So actual video calls, can they be done right now? Yes, they can, but it's not available yet. Supposedly, the first quarter of 2026, we're going to see video calling. That's just going to change everything, absolutely everything. A threat the carriers can't ignore. What makes this more than just another SpaceX Starlink milestone is how it undermines the carrier's business model. The big three relies on spectrum auctions and expensive ground-based rollouts. SpaceX, by contrast, just finalized a $17 billion spectrum deal with EchoStar, giving it the regulatory muscle to expand direct-to-sell, or DTC, across the continents. That's amazing. Amazing. It's actually 17.5 billion, I believe. I think it came to like 8.5 billion in stock and 8.5 billion in actual cash or something. And then they took on, I think it was about a billion or two billion in their liabilities, right? Their debt, let's say from Echo Star, which is still just an amazing deal because now remember SpaceX Starlink has Spectrum. They don't need to borrow it as they are from T-Mobile. I always said once they had their own spectrum, it was kind of end game. Now they do. Anyways, it continues. Suddenly, the old guard's moat doesn't look so deep. 
that is the case. The fastest telecom growth in history. Think about this. AT&T took over 50 years to amass 6 million subscribers in its early days. Verizon needed decades to scale globally. SpaceX Starlink? It hit those numbers in just two years of scaling DTC, or direct to sell. SpaceX has one of the fastest growing telecom footprints in human history, powered by rockets and not towers. What happens next? If SpaceX Starlink's momentum continues, carriers face an existential dilemma, partner or perish. T-Mobile already saw the writing on the wall and struck an early deal. But what happens when SpaceX Starlink starts offering bundled mobile plus broadband packages globally, undercutting the big three by billions? For the first time ever, the U.S. carriers aren't just competing with each other. They're staring down Elon Musk's orbital telecom empire. And that is absolutely the case. And honestly, like I said at the beginning of the video, I am so happy for this. How many of you guys out there just felt screwed by the big three? How many of you look at your telecom bill, your AT&T, your Verizon, your T-Mobile, or whoever you're using, and you look at it and you're like, my God. How am I paying 100 per month for this service? How am I paying 200 for my family for this service? How is this even possible? Why can't I call one of the other three and get a better deal? The reason being is they are a triopoly, as I call them. They're a monopoly, right? Even though they're three separate corporations, they're not. They talk to one another all the time. One says, oh, I'm gonna give you a $5 deal here. Oh, okay, I'll leave my price alone. You do the five bucks, and then when you're done with the five bucks, I'm gonna do a $10 deal plus the phone or some nonsense. And they just go back and forth, back and forth, right? They're not really competing with each other, okay? They are working together to make as much money as possible and to screw you and me. That's their job. Now, there is a fly in the ointment, and that fly is called Elon Musk and SpaceX Starlink. And I said this years ago when it first came out, when I started beta testing, this is now, what, 52, 54 months ago when I started with this. I said, once this gets to a point where we're seeing millions and millions and millions of subscribers, right, it's going to be game over for these telcos out there. They're just not going to be able to compete. How do you compete with something that does not need to create a tower terrestrially on the ground that costs millions and millions and millions of dollars to do? That's why they don't do it anymore. They just don't. I put together some information that I thought was interesting. I want to share it with you. One of the things was about the towers. What I was reading is if things continue and the projections are right, right now we're at six million people on SpaceX Starlink. When they hit 8.2, as they project in December, it is predicted that the big three out there are really going to start seeing these towers become obsolete. And they are going to quietly slow down the rollout of towers. And they're talking about a reduction of 20% in the number of towers that are constructed. 20%, that is a major reduction. And why is that? Because like I said before, the writing's on the wall. They're just not going to be able to compete. They can't spend millions and millions and millions on these towers when SpaceX Starlink can do the exact same amount of coverage area in a fraction of the cost. Now, there's a lot of folks out there that say, well, listen, you know, that that signal doesn't get into the deep areas of buildings and whatnot because it is a satellite. And you're absolutely correct. I just feel like there's going to be a method to the madness. There's going to be a means to an end. There's going to be a way to get that signal into the building. Okay. So just hang tight for that. Trust me. And the reason I say that is because during the last hurricane that we got hit with down here in South Florida, I was live with my wife next to me here. And uh, we didn't have coverage, okay, let's say at all with SpaceX Starlink. We were actually broadcasting through T-Mobile at the time. But I took my phone, it immediately went over to DTC, and I text my wife and it went through immediately. It didn't take two, three minutes. It didn't do like AT&T nonsense. Oh, point it this way, point, oh, you're locked in. Don't move, don't move. Okay, we're locked. Send your message now quickly. It wasn't like that. 
I would just sit there, I would text, boom, it would show up right there next to me, right on my wife's phone. But what I found interesting about this is that the location here, the studio, is made out of concrete. So these walls are eight to 10 inch thick concrete, poured concrete. And then the roof is a shingled roof, asphalt, shingled roof. So either the signal was coming into the building through this, this shingled roof or through the window all the way across the room, I don't know. But regardless, I was getting signal here inside the studio inside a building. Now, would that hold true if I'm in the middle of a building, like uh, in a hospital someplace where you got concrete? No, it's not gonna work, obviously not. But there's probably going to be a means, once again, to get this to work. Maybe it's repeaters, maybe it's something else, I don't really know, but I know that the band that they're going to be using is going to be able to penetrate better, and also the height, remember, the distance from the planet, has gone from 530 kilometers down to about 320 kilometers, it's closer, to Earth, that's where they will be orbiting, that's where they are orbiting. There's currently 650 of these DTC or direct to sell satellites up there. The difference between a SpaceX Starlink satellite and a DTC satellite is simply, they retrofitted that satellite with a E-Node B. An E-Node B is a modem that transforms the satellite into a cell tower. It's the exact same type of thing that you have on a cell tower terrestrially. So it now becomes a cell tower in space, which is amazing if you think about it. And the beauty is that since there is 650 satellites, and this number is growing, it's going to be double by the end of next year, but right now there's 650 of those. It has now been able to cover 95% of the land mass of the world. 95%, no other carrier has ever done that ever. That means that you could be in Alaska, or you could be all the way down in the Antarctic, and you're still going to be able to get coverage. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. The only way to do that years ago is with these costly satellite phones, right? These big, big satellite phones with antennas and all kinds. Now you just use an unmodified cell phone and you're able to connect to space. Just think how amazing that is. The hidden cost here for making these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of towers is just going to make it absolutely impossible for these telcos to be able to compete. When SpaceX and Elon Musk are be able to do it at a fraction of the cost, they're just not going to be able to do it. The other thing that I found interesting was the latency. The latency from these DTC satellites is about 30 milliseconds. That's like internet that you get here on Earth, 30 milliseconds, that is blazing fast. SpaceX Starlink now is sub 20 milliseconds, but still DTC, using your phone into space, 30 milliseconds? That means you're gonna be able to have a true voice telecommunication call. You're gonna be able to do some type of Zoom meeting or some type of call when you're in the middle of nowhere. Just think about first responders, someone that maybe is at the top of a mountain and someone broke a leg. You'll be able to make a call into a hospital and someone that is, let's say, doing triage will be able to see the patient, the person next to you that has the broken leg and tell you exactly what to do to treat them from your phone from your unmodified phone. Think about how many people are going to be saved by this. It's just absolutely amazing. The other thing is, is this Echo Star purchase, all right, this deal in the US where SpaceX Starlink ended up buying, Elon Musk ended up buying just a ton of Spectrum, okay? And it was for $17.5 billion. Well, that actually sets a precedent for global spectrum and what these other entities do in Europe and Africa and Asia and so on and so forth, okay? This is going to move forward and it's gonna move forward exponentially. Trust me on this. And once again, I'm very happy. I'm very happy because these big three, once again, that has been screwing us for so many years are going to feel the twist, the pain, all right? They are going to feel it. That's just the way it is. Elon Musk and SpaceX Starlink has become the fly in the ointment for these telcos. And once again, I am happy about it. What say you? Does this make you happy? <laughs> maybe if the absolute worst was to happen, maybe we'll just simply get cheaper prices because there'll be a fourth carrier out there, another option.
Or maybe best case scenario, the three telcos go belly up or basically turn into nothing or very little or next to nothing. And Elon Musk is able to provide not only spectrum or not only your cell coverage for your family, but also your internet. So you'll have one package. You'll have your SpaceX Starlink dish on your home or your office, and then you'll have SpaceX Starlink on your phone. And that's it. Could you imagine that? One price for both? Man, I don't even know. I don't even know. Guys, what say you? Down below, like I said before, put something down there. If you don't want to, please put an emoji. Put a poop emoji. Put a rocket ship. Put something down there. I would appreciate that. And if you enjoy this content or anything that I do on this channel, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your community, your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you traverse the internet. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are, thank you. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to give back, there's a little thanks button right here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two. That'd be great. You don't have to, though. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, I've put together over, God, it's like 570, 580 videos just for you over the last 50 plus months. I'll put a link here, right? You can click on it now. <laughs> I'll put a link right here so you can go and take a look at those. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it because this channel has always been and always will be about the why. Not just the how, the why is more important. Anyways, guys, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Hopefully through SpaceX Starlink, maybe DTC. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.